Hello, everyone. So, in the part two, I'm going to explain about different type of swaps. So, in the first part, uh, which is uploaded on the YouTube, uh, I've explained about the uh, swap introduction and also my bar rate, uh, swap bar rate, and interest rate uh, swaps and a currency exchange swap. Okay. So, let me share my PPT. So first one is the commodity swap. So basically there are two parties in which the swap agreement is being done and the underlying is commodity. Okay. So the commodity could be oil and livestock and they do this swapping to hedge against the increase in the price. Okay. And this commodity swap settlement is done either in cash or physical delivery. Okay. So let's take an example of airline and oil and fuel. So suppose this airline take, takes oil in a barrel from this industry, like oil industry, and they believe like it, the increase the oil price can increase in near future. Okay. So to mitigate this risk, what they do is they do they go to the any bank like the soil bank. They will take uh, this uh, agreement. Like they will pay some fixed amount to this bank and whatever the variable price which can be more or less it will be taken care by the uh, that investment banker okay next is credit default swap okay so then credit default swap what is uh, what happens is like the investor okay who has invested his money to buy any company's bond or debentures okay so they take uh, they get a coupon or interest from this uh, debt uh, like which he has purchased like uh, debentures or bonds okay suppose in year like after two years or three years company get default who has issued the bonds or debentures Okay, so in that case, it will be a loss for the investors. Okay, so to uh to like on the safer side, okay. So what uh investor can do, he can purchase a protection against this. Okay, so the issuer of this protection, okay, can create a credit default swap. Okay, what they can do is like. And the buyer of CDS makes periodic payment to the seller until the credit maturity date. So here the buyer of CDS will be the investors, okay, and the seller will be the protection seller who has who has sold this credit default swap, okay. And in the agreement, the seller commits that if the debt issuer, okay, so here the debt issuer will be the company who has issued the bond or debentures, okay. So the seller will pay the buyer all the premium and the interest. Okay, that would have been paid up to the date of maturity. So this is being paid by the protection seller. So what is the advantage of this credit default? The credit default, uh, the purchase, the advantage will be the by the for the lender will be like he has passed this risk to the issuer. Okay, now this risk has been reduced to the by the the lender, and the other risk, uh, other advantage is that the seller who has sold this uh, CDS will be will who is getting the premium will be like uh, advantage if the company doesn't default. The company who has uh, who has given this bonds and debentures to this investors, so it will be. Uh, advantage for this uh, protection seller and the disadvantages of this credit default okay so the disadvantage i would say like it is a over the counter market so the regulation is are less so it is risky for the this well, this risky for the cds okay and the other is like the cds seller 
who has sold who has sold the protection seller so if the company defaults like it will be uh the money will be going from his pocket will be in greater lo loss like he has sold this to multiple investors so that is one of the issue okay let's go to the next one total return swap okay so in the total return swap the total return come from a from a particular asset okay will be swap with the fixed interest rate so i will give you example suppose one investor a okay he is having a portfolio of 1 crore and he gets a return of 15% or around 16% every year and there is a one more investor b okay he believe the he believes that the investor a will have the same return in next future but he cannot have that portfolio of 1 crore or 2 crore which is having by a okay but he believes that in the market will do great in the future and it will be like the uh, investor a will uh, portfolio will do good so what he what he can do like he can go he can go to swap bank and he can say that i am ready to pay 10% or 12% to a okay fixed interest fixed interest and whatever the returns come from the portfolio from the a in in next year or next next year will be will be his the return like the capital appreciation and also the uh, dividend payment okay and come the uh, portfolio who is having uh, from the a side investor side a he, he will also get ready on, because he thinks the market will go down in the near future so definitely they will come both in uh, on the same uh, page like okay i am ready to uh, give you my portfolio for cap capital appreciation and dividend if you are giving me 12 percent so this is how the total return swap works okay the next one is the debt equity swap so in the debt equity swap basically it comes in the picture when the company is financially not stable okay and the company has to pay a loan or he has to pay he has to give the money to the uh, person who vendors okay so what happens like they go to the investors okay and they ask they tell them like we are ready to convert your debt interest in the company to the equity interest okay so uh, uh so definitely like it is very uh, like not possible like or uh, investor will ready or not ready it depends on their uh, requirement that time okay so uh, for the com for the financial restructuring this is proposed by the company Okay, so what is the advantage of this debt equity sub? A debt equity sub may offer the company the best chance of withering financial difficulties. So if it is for short duration, suppose they convert it from debt to equity for a short period of time, once the amount comes in the company and this can be reserved. So that is that will be beneficial for the company. Okay, and also one more thing like if a company get default on bank payments then the credit rating get re uh, decreased okay which is given by the crazy law care and company so uh, to avoid that this can this agreement can be done this uh, debt equity swap okay and this is the low cost alternative okay so to obtain the needed capital by converting from debt interest to equity interest this is the best solution for the company which they have And the disadvantages of this debt and equity is like the company may continue to the suffer financial stress even after doing this swap. So even after doing this and they are not getting any cash which they were expecting, so it will be a major problem even after converting from debt to equity. Okay. 
and paying too high a price like the lender may ask for an equity interest that represents a much higher financial price than the outstanding loan balance so like if the equity holder like start uh, uh, selling their equity shares and then it will be not easy for the company to uh, repay loan because the money will go from their bank balance and all. And also the loss of equity. By giving away part of company's equity, the owners lose part of their interest and control in the business. So they are diluting their equity. So that is also one of the drawback. And the last, zero coupon swap. Okay. So here in the zero coupon swap, it is similar to interest rate swap only. The only difference here is like in the interest rate swap, like when we when we have seen like two entity, like suppose entity A and entity B, who exchange their cash flow of uh, who exchange their liabilities in form of interest interest like which they are paying to the bank. Okay, so the interest, the uh, the interest who is paying like the flux, uh, this uh, pay, floating interest which is being paid by a company here, and also the fixed paid by the other uh, company to the bank. Okay, so the major difference is like the person who is paying the fixed interest to the bank will not pay periodically. It will be paid after the end of the maturity. But the person who is having the floating interest rate, he will have to pay uh, periodic payments. So the person who is having a floating interest rate will have both the liabilities at, at one point of time, like for five years or 10 years. But the advantage for the uh, advantage will be uh, for the person who is having a fixed uh, uh fixed interest will be like he will have to pay at the end of the month and at the end of this maturity but he has to pay extra premium for to the uh, person who is having a fixed uh, floating interest rate so yeah so that's all from my side and uh, thank you so much